could have like a lid and then you lift the lid and then all your storage is in there something something Well, I painted the brake drums or the hubs and I put screws from inside the fenders up into the rails to the top rails and I used the screws with the little rubber washers on the heads so that's pretty handy and I've got a couple of compliments today on how good the trailer looks now that I got the aluminum fenders on so that's awesome. Well, I made the tailgate latch support thing. And uh, this is a half inch, half inch uh, stud or half inch bar with a, a hairpin lock pin through it. And this here up top is very similar, but it's uh, 7 16 instead of half inch. So, yeah. The exact same thing over on the opposite side. And the, the flux core welder it makes a mess, but uh, usually a wire wheel that'll clean right up. Usually knock some of the knock some of the flux off, and then clean it up with a wire wheel and paint it. Sorry about the wind. I'm cutting up another one of these furnace oil tanks. And I'm going to use the sheet metal to make a top secret hidden tongue toolbox storage unit thingamabob. So I'm going to, this, this is four inches thick. This, uh, channel so I'll probably put a slab on top and a slab underneath and it'll be four inches tall which is not tall but it'll be low profile sleek aerodynamic 800 pounds not for lifting humans huh well what's the fun in that There it is. That's the slab there that I cut out of the tank. And uh, if I'd make two of these slabs, one on the top of the rails and one on the bottom, I can use the compartment. Maybe I can drop it down and make it deeper, I don't know. Might have to put a notch there. And uh, figure maybe a hinge on the top somewhere, somehow, to access in there. It's lots, it's plenty long, it's like 28 or 29 inches long. It's about, four, back here, it's about 40 inches wide. 40, that's over 3 feet wide at the back. Could have like a lid and then you lift the lid and then all your storage is in there something something so I'm probably gonna cut another one of those out for the bottom
Oh well, my goodness, it's a little bit windy out right now. But this is what I'm doing. I got the sheet metal cut out. I cleaned up the edges where the sharp edges were and I put some uh, black undercoating around the edges. And I figured four inches, the frame's four inches deep here and I figured that's not a very deep toolbox. So I took one of the old sections that I cut out of the frame and and I glued it underneath so instead of four inches tall it'll be like eight inches tall and I split it down the middle so instead of a box channel I split it down the middle and now I have two C channels so I put one of the C channels in here and I'm going to put the other one over on this side, under here, and then I'll have a deeper toolbox. That right there is a section of frame, frame rail that I cut out, cut out of the trailer. And that is a frame section that I split in half. So... Split in half. I'm doing this for about two or three reasons. One is because it saves on weight. So each section I add will be half as heavy. Two is I'll get twice as much material. So I'll get a slab for that side and a slab for this side out of one box. And the third reason is recycling and trying to use what junk I have laying around and this is what I actually this was scrap because I cut it out of the frame when I, when I made the frame shorter so if I can take the junk and reuse it uh, that's a win it's like free materials and free materials are awesome or frig oh my goodness well, I got her tacked on there. Those flux core welds, they look like absolute crap until you clean them up. Anyway, um, yeah, there she is. She's She dropped down four inches, the same as the frame. And I just used the C-channel, so there's actually a little more room on the inside there. And I took the bottom piece, This the bottom piece has a seam in it because the one side of the, one side of the oil tank has a seam in it. <clears throat> but that's okay, so the lid is going to be smooth, there will be no seam at all in the lid. Well, I set the lid on there. Just to give you an idea, I might have to notch around there, or I might have to do something there. It's quite a big, it's quite a big unit. I know it doesn't look that big, but you could fit a lot of stuff in there. Well, that's an interesting shape. So, made this made this front plate here for the toolbox and it's a weird shape. Yeah. Cuz it comes out to here underneath, but up top it goes over 2 inches inside here. And then, uh, yeah, and then ticky tacky zippy zappy, weld that thing, weld that thing in there the best I can. It's tapered back a little bit here at the top, but that's okay for 
aerodynamics and maybe have a little lip on the toolbox so the rain doesn't just run right in you know a little overhang or something yeah so she's coming she's coming along that's the front filler plate there so I'm gonna have to make one for the rear but the rear is only four inches tall but it's a lot longer or it's a lot wider across Look what I made. Friggin' right. Gotta clean up those dirty flux core welds. I know they look like crap, but they do clean up pretty good. So, I made myself a toolbox. Not quite. 100% done with it yet. I still need to do some welding and trimming and cleaning and whatnot. Build the lid on it. So I'm gonna have a lid on it, something like this. And it, this is just sheet metal from one of these old furnace oil tanks. And yeah, it's gonna be like a lid on there. I haven't made the lid yet, but it's gonna open. I don't think it's the whole thing's gonna open like that, but it's gonna open and it'll have stuff in there. And it'll hold quite a bit of stuff. I think it's. 30 inches long and 40 inches wide at the back. Lots of room for stuff. Yeah. I'm pretty proud of that. I know it looks like crap right now. I need to clean it up and paint it. Finish the lid but I really like that Ta-da! Oh my goodness Should be good for straps and chains and stuff like that <laughs> and last thing I did was weld some hinges on not too bad Well, I welded this this thingy on here, so you wind it up, and then it drives after you wind it up, <laughs> like the old wind-up toy car. No, not really, but that would be cool. <laughs> so I welded this thing on here. It goes over that and you can turn it that way or you can put a padlock on it or both turn it and put a padlock on it so I think I'm almost done with the toolbox almost Oh my goodness. Hi right, buddy.
I really like this low profile uh, built in toolbox because if you need to go pick up some lumber let's say and your trailer deck is 11 feet long and let's say you want to haul 12 feet lumber 12 foot lumber uh, you can just run the lumber uh, through this gap in the headboard and just run the lumber up to here and if you had a conventional toolbox that sits on top of the tongue you wouldn't be able to do that it would be your lumber would be running in to your friggin to your toolbox up above well I finally took the trailer down down off the ramps it was sitting up on ramps for a long time while I was working on it and uh, down on the ramp or down off the ramps man she is low she is low so shiny oh my goodness new hubcaps bearing caps whatever you want to call them so I took this one was missing been missing for the whole project so I took the, the old one from the other side and it was all beat up and I took it to the auto parts and got two new ones they're pretty they're pretty affordable you can actually get a kit that comes with new bearings too but I think these bearings are okay Might have to paint those wheels if I don't uh, if I don't end up changing them. Okay, on my car I've got the sig uh, the four-way signals on, and look how dirty this thing is. Oh my goodness, this car needs to be detailed. Anyway, I've got the tail light on and the four-way, both. So when the tail light's on, that's this side marker illuminates. So it's hard to tell, but it's she is lit up, illuminated. So that's a good that's a good thing. Since my tail lights are on, four ways are on, so it's flashing and. And the side marker is lit up because the tail lights are on. Four ways are working, tail lights are working. Now let's make sure let's make sure the signals. It's hard to tell with four ways because both sides flash. With signals only one side flash. So I got the driver's side signal on right now. There she is. Friggin' rights. Well, there she is, hooked up, wired up. I still have to paint the tailgate and the toolbox, but Zero Fox, I'll do that at a I'll do that sometime soon when I get some more paint. One thing that surprised surprised the shit out of me is how level and low it rides. It rides nice and low and level, same as my vehicle. It's got a underslung axle and a drop axle or the axle over the springs plus a drop axle. So it rides super low now that it's down off the ramps. There's about maybe between uh, the frame right there and the ground, there's maybe 16 inches at the most. And at the front, under the toolbox, there's maybe 10 or 12 inches at the most. And. My car is not really, it's not really sagging or uh, squatting.
Holy shit, boys. Well, I painted the toolbox finally. That looks better. I might take a piece of weather stripping and put it um, on this this piece underneath here. Uh, it has an edge that goes across the front, so I might take some weather stripping and put it across across there. Maybe uh, maybe around the edges or something. Pretty nice low profile toolbox as well. And you could still, if you're hauling like long boards or something, you could still bring them up because it's lower than the deck or the same height as the deck.